Hello and welcome again to Nomads World Minecraft. Uh, today I'm going to show you what I've done since the last video, of course. Uh, we finished up our iron farm up there. And I've done a little bit of... We got the villagers over, we got the roof on it, and it's working. Uh, I'll go up there in a second. What I've done, uh, where is my minecart? I moved, um, I'm making a little space here. We're going to do a automated uh, furnace setup, and we'll get to that later in the video. Um, minecart, there it is. Uh, I moved those chests over here, started a little st uh, expanded storage system. Uh, I left a space in between so that I could put a torch. Uh, I suppose the torches could have gone along the top. Um, but I thought, you know, I can go this way for a little while until I start breaking through outside and um, have two spaces so that I have, you know, I don't like, I don't like being crowded uh, like this. So uh, I got a couple of spaces between the chests and then this way I can tunnel in that direction and I can go behind these chests I can add additional chests make another two spaces and another chest and continue on in that direction so I can make a pretty good size storage uh, it's not automated at all obviously I am still placing uh, and I'll probably change it up I have a, a system that I saw somebody else do once and I kind of like it. It uses item frames, so you have a little sign next to your chest that tells you what's in that chest. And that comes in handy when you got a whole lot of chests because then you're like, uh, where, oh, let's see, this, because I just moved them all over here and I'm like, um, let's see, that's my iron stuff, that one's empty, that's my wood, there's my stone and valuables. Uh, I think it was this one has all my miscellaneous. And I moved all the extra food items, all the seeds and and whatnot over here, even though I'm not currently using them. Uh, we'll get to that hopefully pretty soon. Um, I might do that off camera a little bit and then bring in for progress update. Uh, nothing done down below, but I did make this little uh, extension. I, I changed up the rail system a little bit. Now that I've got the... Um, the iron farm finished and I won't be needing to get up there as often uh, other than to collect iron so I made a rail that goes over here to my base now I put the door so if anything does get down in here it can't get through the door uh, it shouldn't get shouldn't even be able to get down the ladder um, so it starts here you know throw down the mine cart go forward a little bit, hit the powered rail, take off. All right. Now here, because I want to explore this area a little bit, I put a little pathway with a gate and some stairs. Or, well, they're steps. I won't call them stairs because they're uh, you have to jump up and down those. Uh, so nothing should be able to get go through that. I suppose a Enderman could get down in here, but... I'm not real concerned about that. The, the main thing I was concerned about was protecting from zombies and skeletons that might come up over here and drop down. So this actually, if I go over here, as you can see, it raises up. So they shouldn't be able to, they can't get up over that. There's slabs on top, so nothing can spawn on top. It's all lit up. I lit up an area here to kind of protect this zone and uh, I'll probably extend the torches out here a little bit more but uh, let's go to the train hub we'll start right here and go forward this one's a pretty short one it just goes right over there check my inventory 
So jump, grab my cart. Okay, so this spot obviously is bare. All right, that allows me to stop. So that track there goes up to the iron farm. This one goes down and down to the this village. Uh, as you can see, I raised up the the section I had down there. So I took out the steps that were there, but it still take you right there. I can go down into that house still and and still be safe. I probably might set up a, a bed and a crafts bench or something down in there just in case I need to use it later. And then of course I've got this one. I took down those steps and this one goes over to the other village, which I still have I haven't counted them, so I, I'm sure I've still got a few more villagers over there that uh, I could bring over and put them in this one. Now, I did... I only put 10 villagers in this iron farm. I've never heard of anything saying that the uh, number of villagers has any bearing on the spawn rate of the iron golems but you do need 10 and so I got my 10 get my chest as you can see I put slabs all over the place keeping stuff from spawning and still giving me somewhere to work on I will probably raise these torches up a little bit and uh, that way I can finish filling them in because this this makes me nervous walking along this stuff I just I keep thinking I'm gonna fall and um, I left that part of the rail system in in case I need decide to put another villager in there or or whatever um, so it's it's mainly still there and uh, just needs to reconnect so as you can see I got my 10 villagers there I got my roof put over it that'll prevent lightning strikes from hitting the villagers and turn them into uh, witches and it also I believe there might actually be no I think I think there's enough space uh, stuff might be able to spawn up in that space I didn't think about that I was thinking more the roof but here comes the Sun yay so still got my chest up here I gotta take all that stuff back down to the main base I've got my secondary account just so that I could keep this loaded while I'm off doing other things and as you can see over the course of a couple of days uh, it's less than a couple of days but uh, basically day and a half maybe and I've gotten one two three four five six seven eight nine nine and a half stacks of iron it's all free iron I don't have to go spend time mining for it now if I really needed to get a bunch of iron it's probably faster to actually mine to get it but that's using up my game time my video recording time to be down there collecting iron and other resources when I could be building something else or recording something else so I have this I've got I'm not recommending or suggesting that you have a second account but if you have a second account you know you could build an iron farm or whatever you have like I have had my tree farm and my crops growing down there and I had my secondary account keeping that loaded just to keep bringing in some resources uh, if I didn't have the second account I would just you know every time I went to work or went to bed or whatever I just bring my character up here and I just set him wherever I needed him to keep stuff loaded so that it could keep growing or or earning ingots now as as I explained in the last video uh, iron golem should uh, spawn get pushed by the water into the hole they drop down and die in the in the lava 
but they'll drop their loot into the hoppers which goes into the chests and as you can see it's been pretty good now iron golems also drop poppies uh, don't have much of a use for poppies at the moment but I do collect flowers uh, they make dyes for wool and whatnot that uh, for decoration uh, yawning my head off and um, so that's basically what I've done in the past uh, day and a half and um, we'll go back down go back to the base and get the furnaces started I'll be right back all right we're back in the base and I thought I'd make a comment about using ladders um, when you use a ladder there's a tendency to act you know to be like back and forth you it's really hard to go straight up and down uh, because you're basically going in the direction that your mouse is so you know if I'm going this way I'm going up the ladder and I'm going up against this wall so it's best uh, in my opinion to not just have a pillar with ladder going up it uh, you can do that if you're real good at, at you know you pretty much just look straight up and just keep your cursor centered so that you stay in the center because you're gonna you're gonna kind of veer off and if you get too far off you're gonna pop off the ladder and you're gonna fall down and die um, another thing is so what I do is I make this one uh, one block hole and that's what I put my ladder in now I can't fall off of this all right um, but if I was to make it bigger an, a way that you could protect yourself from falling and dying would be to dig out a little section here and put a block of water in here okay so if let's say I had this row this column of blocks removed then I would probably at some point accidentally like go too fast and I would fall and I wouldn't hit the ladder so I would end up falling down and dying but if I was to take this block and that block on the same level out and play replace those with water then it when I fall doesn't matter how far you fall I could fall from the iron farm if I as long as I landed in water I'm not gonna die okay you can also land I'm pretty sure in lava now granted you're gonna burn but the fall itself will be negated by the liquid of the lava uh, I'm not gonna go test that but uh, so if, if you're doing you know like a single column going way up in the sky and it, you're putting ladders up it make sure to put some water down at the bottom that'll protect you from fall damage if you accidentally get off the ladder and, and drop all right otherwise you know you just mine a little bit make make a you know you don't have to do the corners just do you know one column there one column there one column on each side of you with a little opening to get in and out and throw up your ladder and you're not going to have an issue and then I make these little spots here I can fill these in with uh, you know I fill in the so that I can't get in there but I have torches you can't place torches along this uh, tube um, this hole because of the fact that the ladder is there so you're gonna be resorting to crafting little holes and putting I'll go down here like this put a torch there grab my block put that there and voila I've got the entire tube lit up uh, nothing should spawn in here regardless because uh, I mean unless I had like one of those torches gone uh, it, nothing should spawn in here the ladder takes up the space it's not gonna nothing's gonna spawn and unless it's spawning on a solid block um, so it can't spawn on water either 
So um, let's go ahead and start this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw up one furnace with the chests and hoppers. And then later I'm going to, you know, I'll sh I'll do, I want to do a little experiment with it. And then I'm going to come back and do, you know, like maybe four of them. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably come back later and redesign it. And then I'll show you that in another video. But the idea is to show you in this video how an automatic furnace works. All right. So first thing we're going to need is some hoppers. And let's drop the mine cart off. And we need, um, I was going to say a dispenser, but not dispensers. Oh, we need chests. That's right. Okay. Chests, hoppers. We need furnaces. Let's go ahead and take that one. Oh, I had some stuff in it. Cool. When you break one, if there's something in it, it'll it'll give it to you. And uh, all right. So first of all, we need to need a little bit of room here. Don't need those. Need the furnace. That and that. That was the leftover gold. All right. So start with we place our chest. We're going to place, this is going to be the chest that the items go into after they're smelted or cooked. And so let's place it right here. And I'm doing this by memory, so I, I know the basics of it, but um, I'm going to have to go up higher, I think. And let's, now let's go down one. So we'll take this out. Let's go down one more level. Okay. And I need to test something here. With a hopper going into it Okay, yes, I can still open the chest with a hopper on it. Um, I don't know why I even had a doubt on that, because I use these, this system all the time. Okay. So we're going to put the chest here, and I'm going to use a double. I always, I always use doubles. Uh, no real reason to use singles unless you're really short on wood. And we're going to put the hopper channeling into that okay so if let's take let's remove these temporarily okay so you can see the pipe going into the chest all right now on top of that we're going to put the furnace okay and then into the top of the furnace we're going to put another hopper. Now, this hopper correlates with this one here. Okay, so anything that goes into this hopper is going to channel it into this spot. So this is the food, the iron, the gold. Anything that we need to smelt or cook or melt down, anything like that. Now, the next one, and we'll put the rest of, the, we'll build the rest of it and we'll do some fill in in a minute. Uh, actually, let's um, put a block there because we don't want something spawning in there behind our automatic smelter. Okay. Now, because we're putting a chest here, we need to be able to get into it. So we're going to have to remove that one block went in there. And went in there. We'll get that back. So we're going to put a chest there that we have access to. Mm, do I want some light up there? Nah, it's fine. Okay, so we've got our uh, product that's going in. 
Now what we need is fuel. And the way the fuel works, do I want to use two hoppers? Yeah. Sorry. I'm going to go like that. And then like that. Okay, so I've got that hopper with a pipe going in there and this one going into there. Now what this will do, let's put a block right there and if we put something in there it goes into that one, oh, it's being piped and it should go in there and it didn't. Why didn't it? Oh, because it's the wrong type of, of item. It needs to be stuff back from this one. It needs to be a piece of coal or charcoal. Uh, yeah, there's some. We get some of that and there's some stuff to smelt. All right. So we put into this we're going to put one. Now we don't have anything loaded, so all it's going to do is move that into the fuel spot. All right, so we'll get our fuel back because we we don't want it to run just yet. And let's put that block back in. And then on top of this, we need another double chest. Since I like double chests. All right. Now, what we could do is we could fill in with glass in these spots. I could put glass here so that that way I could still get any access but it fills in but I'm not going to do that. Not, like I said nothing should spawn in there. Uh, I can then put in as you can see this is a two by two space column and it goes one two three four five if you count the space above the the chest there six spaces tall okay and then we could put the this stone back in uh, we'll leave this open so that we can have access there we have access there and we have access there okay and then we could either fill this in all the way back over to here or we could put another uh, furnace right here and which is probably what I'll do and I'll make prob I could double this up where uh, this one like this one it was turned around so that all the items ended up in here um, it's not a bad idea just do the uh, mirror image of this do it right there and then that way this one chest would cl collect the loot from both from two chests or two furnaces um, that's probably what I'll do I'll, I'll I'll let you know in the next video um, so let's give this thing a test run so there's nothing in our uh, down here uh, we, we have nothing in any uh, any of them but as you can see if I put these in the product they get piped down and they're loaded into here okay and if I put one two three four five okay and those will get loaded into there now the thing to be considering is if you have an unlimited amount of charcoal because you have plenty of wood which we do we have an unlimited source of wood we just need the time to harvest and then you could fill this up it's going to fill it's gonna pipe whatever it can into here so a stack of charcoal is 64 so it's gonna you know five stacks of 64 plus the one in the corner so there's another five stacks so there's 10 stacks plus what's in here plus this would be 64 okay 
So I could literally get a ton of uh, charcoal in here. Now, if I was using, where is it? Uh, if I was using regular coal, I'll show you something about regular coal. Can't do this with charcoal, but with regular coal, you can make a block of coal and I want to say it's like um, a block of coal. Well, it's it's. Uh, let's do like this, so it doesn't have the fives. So there is nine uh, coal. Okay, they can make a block of coal. Now each of these would craft for uh, eight items so eight times nine is 72 so you would think that this would be 72 because you can put this in the furnace at, as fuel uh, that would be 72 however as I recall I want to say it actually burns for 100 um, let me double check that real quick. Hold on. All right. It actually is 80 times. So where it was 72, uh, yeah, 72. So you're actually getting the result of as if you had 10. So it's actually beneficial to use blocks of coal. You get a little more efficiency for your, for your coal, but um, like I, I've said in the past, I tend to hold on to the coal uh, for anything in the future that I might need it for. Um, and just use charcoal because it's, uh, you know, it's unlimited. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of coal down there, just like there's a lot of iron. Um, but once you've mined a resource, it's gone. So then you have to go further and further away to, you know, to, to gather more and more resources. So um, I know play, uh, players that basically they just use regular coal and they get enough of it to do what they need to have done. I am going to just go ahead and continue doing it uh, with charcoal. Uh, if I ever came across a way of making regular coal, or if the charcoal would, uh, in a later patch, becomes able to be put into a block and is as efficient, then I probably will do that uh, more than likely. So for now, I just continue using charcoal. All right, so what we're going to do here, we're going to put... Um, I want eight of those and we'll just go ahead and throw all those in there so we put the eight blocks of iron in there and we put all of our coal charcoal in there and what this is gonna do is smelt those eight items okay and as you can see the number is it's still feeding those in now once there's nothing in here it will not use any more coal okay it's got one coal that's being used here so it's not counted in here I had 63 I have 62 so once these are gone it's not going to continue using up this resource all right so it's beneficial to do when I'm putting things into this chest up here to make sure that it's in groups of eight okay now I don't need to put eight here and eight here you know like iron 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 but if I put 64 and 64 and 64 and 64 and then 32 as long as it's divisible whatever I put in here is divisible by eight I'm not gonna have any wasted fuel all right I hate wasting so as you can tell I'm not gonna smelt this or this now I could put, actually, let's do that. Um, we're going to put these two in there. 
all right and as you can see it put the iron in here and it immediately funneled it down here now what that channeling it into there immediately does is allow you to smelt multiple items different items and not lose efficiency on your fuel okay so we're gonna put these in here that's gonna take all of it all goes in there okay now it's not gonna take the gold yet because this is loaded up with iron okay once this iron is burned up and smelted then it's going to put the gold in here and what I want to see it should stay at 61 we're gonna check that out I I'm actually gonna end up doing a test run here in a minute I want to see if I can put eight different items in here and it only burn one piece of charcoal there may be a little bit of a time lapse or uh, a time uh, gap between each item that would be just enough that it may only burn seven so we're gonna we're gonna check that out um, this won't take very long so otherwise I'd probably try and I have never done a time lapse um, or third person so I'm going to just go ahead and let this go and then we'll do the same with the with the other test and um, so uh, yep it did it okay and it didn't burn it didn't start up another charcoal now if it did if I was to put one gold in here it would burn you know it would burn up one more and then once that was gone it would just continue burning up that one so all right so what we need is let's grab our stuff here we need eight items we've got one there and there's one that'll make regular stone we've got a piece of mutton piece of rabbit a piece of beef uh, what else we got we got a chicken there's six mm. oh there's a pork chop and let's go grab a piece of wood that was in here all right so we got our eight items eight different items and we're going to just ship all these in here okay and it's already smelting away and it should stay at 60 I'm hoping um, that way we get the full efficiency of this system to for our fuel so I just got off work a couple of hours ago so I'm yawning like crazy sure use a nap but I really wanted to get another video done I haven't been able to do a lot of recording and I want to get as many videos onto my channel as I can so I thought I'd do it do a video now and then decide whether I'm gonna do after that since I'm gonna be up for a few hours Okay, I think that was uh, the piece of wood, I think, is the last one. Oh. Did it already do the wood? Maybe it did. Come on. Get all the way. Oh, no. Okay, so we got our seven item, or our eight items, but it's slightly it's just slightly long so probably if you were doing like two different items then you know like if you had you know seven ink seven metal and one piece of, wo of wood or, or food you'd be fine I, th I think um, obviously I mean we did that with the iron and the gold we, we did that so there is a small fraction of, a, of a, a little bit that it just doesn't quite get eight total different items 
So that's useful to know. Um, so let's grab all this and we'll put all this stuff away. So what we'll do is I'll do I'm probably let's see since this will let's see this chest is going to be part of that so I'm going to end up needing an extra hopper instead of because uh, what will happen is the furnace will be here this chest will be here and this this so yeah there'll be another hopper pushing over to here so there will be a gap uh, I'll fill it in with stones or uh, stone block but um, I think that'll that'll be a little more efficient on the chests and I'm really not gonna I mean you know if I filled this up completely and it had it completely smelt everything it's only gonna fill that so hmm, if that's full that would be full and this one would be over full so yeah yeah maybe I'll do I'll just do a mirror image that's what I'll do so I'll do this exact same thing but I'll do it here and I'll probably keep it uniform like this instead of a mirror image then what I'll do is put a item frame on here um, I was thinking I could do an item frame to for a like a label but I don't know if that's necessary so but I'll do uh, four of them at least and um, maybe even extend it out a little bit more I don't know uh, I can do one two three I'll move this so I can get three more in here and then take two of these out uh, maybe make a little hallway down there and on the back side I can do some more I don't know uh, if I'm needing a lot of glass or uh, if I decided to do something with stone, regular stone, then you know I could take the cobblestone uh, from here. I could take cobblestone and turn it into regular stone, which has a different look to it. I mean, it's a different texture compared to that. You know, here's that's stone, that's cobblestone. So some people prefer the regular stone. And you know, and I could also do something along the lines of uh, uh, stone slabs uh, or stone bricks. These are these are stone slabs, so they have a little more of a smooth surface, uh, and they look more like a brick as opposed to pieces of rock. Um, probably the same texture as this it's, but it would have a line um, I don't know I you know it's just sometimes I get where I have a lot of stuff to smelt and I can uh, you know if I had a lot of bread to do oh, well the bread's done there but if I had a lot of uh, wood to make into charcoal you know four of them and then sit back and wait and then four more but you know I am loading up whatever I need into here and it'll do its job on its own so four may be plenty um, people have done on a few videos I've watched uh, people have done in some super smelters where they've got like you know like 30 furnaces going and they've got it all set up where they just one chest load and you know one chest for product one chest for fuel and one chest for uh, all the output all the all the product that is finished and, uh, and and they may have two or three chests you know just for for storage and um, I I've done one and it works fairly well but I had some issues with somewhere in the in the how I had built it and it ended up uh, in the hoppers some of the 
some of the stuff got stuck and uh, I had issues with that so yeah I probably I, I kind of just like to just you know simplify it now you know if it was just four I might could get away with you know experimenting and, and finding a way to make that work but we're just gonna go with a, a single furnace automatic uh, automatic furnace system and uh, you know I'll build four of them that way I can I can make a lot of stuff you know it's like throw a bunch of stuff in here and then go to work or go to bed and and when I wake up you know it should be either done or need more fuel more product whatever and uh, but uh, one thing I'm about ready to do since I haven't been able to get the villagers to breed yet and boy it is coming down uh, I did put a uh, here's here's something so it's raining right now right and it's dark so let's I got two beds here in case my other characters over here uh, now when you have two accounts and you're playing solo uh, it puts up a little notice to the other player saying that so and so is sleeping, meaning your first character. He is sleeping. And in order for it to become daylight, you both have to sleep. So every, if you're playing on a regular server, everybody has to sleep at the same time. You know, everybody has to get into bed and sleep in order to make it become daytime. So what I'm going to do right now is on my other account. He's got a bed over there, so I'm going to put him in bed, and it's going to change it to daytime. All right, so uh, so I, that's why I've got two beds here, in case both of them are over here. I only need one over at the iron farm. I've got one over at the secondary farm or secondary village, um, but uh, so nice. Okay. So as you can see, got another full thing of wheat. I've got lots of bread going on, but I haven't been able to get the villager breeder to the villager breeding system to work. I haven't been able to get them to pick up the bread. Uh, I've tried on the up there in the iron farm. I've tried uh, potatoes. I've tried carrots. As you can see, I'm getting close to being full there. And then I'm gonna probably use the smelting system to start cooking them. And I'd like to get a full chest of of baked potatoes, and then I'll fill this back up with regular potatoes for uh, trading with with villagers. Uh, I also need to fill this one up. There's nothing cooking about that. Um, seeds for planting my wheat, and of course I got some wheat that I have not turned into bread in case. I'm deciding to uh, start breeding something. Hold on one sec. All right, had a little frog in my throat from all the talking. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I want to get a cow farm going. I want to get a sheep farm going. Uh, probably a pig farm, which is where the carrots will come in handy. Um, so wheat attracts probably horses too. Or that might be apples. Uh, horses really have no, I mean, you can ride them. But, you have no, uh, until you feed them and, like, I think put a saddle on them and whatnot, uh, you really can't control them very good. Um, so, the wheat is good for breeding cows, and sheep and then carrots maybe potatoes also are good for uh, pigs and of course uh, for when it would get into villager trading um, having lots of carrots and potatoes and wheat uh, or or is it bread I don't remember uh, for trading to the farmers to get emeralds and then you use the emeralds to buy other stuff that you want from the other villagers uh, the main thing is librarians for me I really don't use villagers for much other than the librarians uh, the, the librarians have 
uh, three slots that you can open up for books, the enchanted books. And so you can purchase these enchants that you can then put using an anvil. Uh, let's build an anvil real quick, just so you, just for the heck of it. Um, and it just takes iron. And first we need to make, um, oh, we got to get rid of this. First we need to make iron blocks. We need three of those. Okay. And then that allows you, you need three iron blocks and four regular ingots that gives you an anvil. All right. And we're going to put, let's put the anvil right here next to the crafting that there and there it is okay now in here you can put something in here and if you, if I put another iron iron axe here then you know the the two items need to be compatible okay so I can't put a stone and an iron together and uh, but I could put two stone axe or two wood axe on here and what would happen is it w would create a new axe. Now this axe, if you if you look at this durability here, okay, uh, as you can see, it's about maybe 66% or 75% or so durability left. Now if I put another axe here that had a, maybe 25%, then it would give me one axe with full du durability. Okay, what it does is it takes the durability from both items and then adds an additional 5%, I want to say, to the durability. So you can take two worn out items, put them together, and get an I one item that has a little extra durability. Okay, so like if I took this here, okay, it's a little bit down. And I don't have another one that's down, but if I put that there, it's going to give me another, you know, a pickaxe that's full. So if this was down, it, it could be down almost all the way, probably, because it's going to combine the two plus give me a little bit. And it would probably give me a full pickaxe. So that's a way of uh, repairing. Um, you can do it with bows. So I could take two bows that I've worn down a ways you know and combine them and get a, a good bow out of it um, you can take an, a tool or a weapon put it in here put a book with it that's an enchant book and it would apply the enchant to that item so if like I had a bow and I had a book with infinity one uh, it would then give me that bow back here, the, the the result with that enchant on it. You also have the ability to rename. Um, so I could take that and just rename it, and it would cost me one XP. Okay, now the XP remember is down here on down by your hotbar right now I'm at 36 so it would take one of those levels uh, if I was to take that and that it would take two I really wish they would change this font or, or this color um, or give us the ability to change colors uh, for text uh, I, I, this is the main one. I, I really don't like this. It's really hard to see, but it says XP cost 2. Okay, now if I take it and go this way, yeah, it's not going to let me do that way. But if I do it that way, it's going to cost 2. Um, put that there, that goes there. Now, let's see. What can I show you? Something else. Here's another bow. So if I go here, and I put my bow there, and I put this bow, see how it's got very little. It's going to get, see it almost, it's almost full. Um, so it takes the two, adds 5%, and this only costs two. Okay, 
it's not quite worth it. Um, I'm going to actually utilize this bow for making another dispenser. But I want to show you, if I go this way, and it still says two. Eh, figures. There are combinations where if you take, say, I have two pickaxes, and this one has, say, unbreaking, and this one has um, uh, silk touch. Okay, those are two of the enchants that we'll talk about another time when we get into enchants. So unbreaking and enchant. And if I put them on here like this, it would give me one value for how many levels it would cost me. If I switch them around, it would give me a different value. And it's simply because it's actually taking, it's not like taking two of these and making a complete new item. It's technically using one of these and adding, so I think it takes this one and it adds this one to that one, and that's the result you get. So anytime you're using the anvil, make sure you check both ways. You know, take this one, move it there, and see which value. You're going to get the same item either way, but it's going to cost you differently sometimes. Um, in this case, I don't have anything that I can really use to, to show you. But uh, once we get into the enchants, well, you'll definitely see some differences there. Um, so, and that, you can do armor, tools, and weapons, okay? Um, not sure of anything else. And maybe books. I've never tried put taking two books to get another book that has both. There's really no point in that that I can think of. Uh, there may be a way to utilize that system to make a book. You know, I mean, you could have like a chest full of books that are all set up exactly the way you want them so that when you need to, you can throw your iron pickaxe in there and then throw the right book in there and boom, it's fully enchanted. Me, I tend to use, um, I, I tend to just repair the item if I can. Uh, and then if I'm uh, in a habit, sometimes you use up an item completely and it breaks, it's gone. So even with the enchants. Well, I tend to make additional spares uh, en enchanted the same way, just so I have a backup. Because, um, you know, you could die somewhere. Now I've got a, it set, of course, to not drop my loot. So I keep my inventory when I die. So that's useful. But if I had that turned off, then, you know, all my stuff. If I had all this stuff here with enchants and I died and dropped that stuff and I'm, and then I, res let's say I was a long ways away and I couldn't get back, you know, I'm going to respawn here at the last bed that I slept in. So now I got to get back to where my gear is. Well, I got to also make sure that whatever I'm going to be picking up, I'm going to have room for. So I might have to like, you know, Maybe get a, get a little bit of gear so I can live all the way over there. And then I gotta grab a couple of chests so I can drop a chest and, and throw any extra stuff in there. And then I gotta come back to the base, drop some stuff off, go back to the chest. So I like keeping my inventory. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of, I consider it a little bit of a cheat, but you know, at least for this video uh, series, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it just so I don't have to like. If I die, I don't have to go and restock everything before I continue a video. I can just keep going. Um, one of the things I was thinking about earlier, saw a guy do a super flat uh, series in survival. And in super flat, I guess uh, he had it set up somehow that it spawned villages. Now... The, if you watched my video on mobs, I didn't see any villages there, but I'm going to check. I'm going to do a, a little check on that, but um, I'm kind of tempted to do a, a super flat survival in hard mode, you know, just kind of really challenge myself because I've been playing a while and sometimes the game gets really stagnant. I like doing these videos though, so I'm going to be playing on this server for a while, but I might eventually start up a, 
a second channel that's a super flat channel, you know, and it'll be uh, instead of being on easy, it'll be on hard, and I'll turn uh, griefing back on so that the creepers can blow up anything I build, and and uh, turn the in keep the inventory, turn that off, and you know, I just make it a real good challenge to myself. Um, it's enough of a challenge as it is because it uh, doesn't really give you anything. You know, you, there's no trees. There's no, you can only mine down like three or four squares before you hit bedrock. So you're, you're not hitting any stone. So you got to go find a village. Uh, food's really not an, that much of an issue because, um, you know, you can, you can kill stuff. Uh, you wouldn't be able to cook it, but I, th I'm pretty sure you can still eat uh, the raw stuff that you get from the animals. Um, you're not going to get as good a benefit from it, but you know you can't cook yet. But once you get to the first village, you know that has a blacksmith. Okay, then you got a, you know there there'll be a couple of furnaces there, and you can use those to to start cooking with. And you can tear down the the village to for all the wood and the doors and the stone and um, start making some tools and weapons and whatnot. And uh, the what he did was he went from village to village and he took what he needed from each village. And I think he ended up going back to some of the villages and collect. You know, he he made a chest, you know, and dropped off everything that he hadn't collected from that village. And um, and then a, and then he also uh, uh, any time he had a villager that he could trade with, you know, he got some emeralds. And then when he could, he would with enough emeralds he traded for uh, a tool or a weapon or whatever that he could, you know, ob ob obtain. Um, the only thing I could think of would be finding, uh, you know, with a v with a village, you're going to get water, so you can build your infinite water source. You're going to get some food. Um, you're going to get some some decent starting resources, but you're not. You may until you find a blacksmith or you know you find a chest at one of those villages that has a sapling. You're not going to be able to build a tree farm. And without the tree farm, you're limited on whatever wood that the houses are built out of so you're really limited so yeah that's that's an idea I've been thinking about um, I'm also gonna get started on that other game uh, rising world I want to get started on a, a channel on that so that's um, this weekend is Valentine's Day weekend for me Tuesday and Wednesday off uh, so I probably won't get a whole lot done recording wise especially on Wednesday um, Tuesday I might be able to get something recorded I'm gonna try and get one more video recorded tonight before I go to bed um, and uh, maybe another one tomorrow hopefully so uh, that's gonna do it for this video it kinda started rambling on there but uh, those that's kinda my plan and uh, next video what I'm gonna do is the chicken farm we've got the eggs so we're gonna do a chicken farm so we can start we can switch from potatoes to chicken I love chicken so that'll be done and then I'm gonna also maybe in the same video depending on how long that one takes I'm gonna do a video on a automatic uh, crop farm that will save me some time rather than having to go through and doing this it'll harvest them all for me and put it all into chests for me uh, it really doesn't save that much time uh, there are automatic farms uh, in Java edition where you can get the villagers to replant but uh, I've never been able to get that to work properly in bedrock so for now I'm going to continue to just do it the old-fashioned way, but I may make an uh, an automated uh, harvest system for my for my uh, crops, and 
that'll take up a little less space. I won't get ex quite as many uh, resources because I'll end up it's, it's going to be about eight squares wide and um, so I'm going to have a little extra space maybe for something else. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, give me a give me a like, comments please, and pl please be sure to subscribe. Uh, I did find in on YouTube how to get my my subscriptions to be shared so that you can see who I subscribe to. Uh, be sure to check out their videos. Um, Mumbo Jumbo he plays on Hermitcraft server, which is a Java version it's not the bedrock so things are slightly different mostly with the uh, things like the villagers and the um, uh, redstone contraptions he's really good he does lots of stuff with redstone uh, be sure to give him a like on any videos you'd like on his and uh, be sure to take into consideration that his older videos, anything that's like six months or older, if you're trying to duplicate what he's doing, remember this is Bedrock, his is Java, and there may have been changes uh, doing uh, patches come out and they change the, the redstone, how it works, and sometimes his stuff stops working properly. So uh, be sure to take that in consideration. The other one I've subscribed to so far is uh, Radio Man Zero Three. He does a number of video, uh, different channels. He's doing. Um, he doesn't do so much Minecraft anymore uh, that I've seen, but he does uh, some Seven Days to Die. He does Rising World, which is the, the my next channel, and he does Medieval Engineers. He's also started up a couple other games. Uh, one is Citadel of Fire or with Fire, something like that, and um, which is very similar to the other games, but a little further along, I guess. And then um, there was another one he's done. Oh, Ark. He does Ark. And uh, he's done Ragnarok, and he's done Survival, and I think he's done Evolved. Um, so he he's played around with that and that one's more of a co-op with his wife so he uh it's very interesting game i probably won't spend the money on it that one's a little more expendy um medieval engineers and uh, rising world they're still in alpha and they're fairly inexpensive so they're they're useful mostly all you can really do in them is is build uh gather craft and build but it kind of gets you set up for when the game is fully evolved and completed. You'll you'll be able to see what you can you know, you already have some feel for for uh, what you can do for building. So, uh, like I said, please sure, be sure to subscribe and uh, let's see if I can do this. Where's the button? There it is. Um, We'll do it that way. <laughs> I can't do it quite like everybody. There we go. So, waving at you. Have a good day.